the science religion ethics triad in the nature of deep ethics. A the theme in my writing set out in detail in the book with Nancy Murphy is the importance of including ethics in the science and religion debate. This is because ethics is causally effective as outlined above and provides the highest level of values that set human goals and choices. Consequently, a crucial issue, the origin of ethics on the one hand and the nature of ethics on the other. With Nancy, I am a moral realist. That is, I believe we discover the true nature of ethics rather than inventing it. Hence the title of our book, On the Moral Nature of the Universe. Indeed, it is only if ethics is of this nature that it has a truly moral character. That is, it represents a guiding light that we ought to obey. I'm fascinated that Steven Pinker, too, has been suggesting moral realism in his recent book, The Blank Slate. He, too, realizes this must be the case if, if it is to have the normative status that true morality must have. If true, this is a very important feature of the nature of reality of the universe. But then what is the nature of true morality? Nancy and I have argued it must be kenotic in nature. That is, it must be a kind of ethics involved letting go of one's own interest on behalf of others, being ready, if necessary, to sacrifice one's own interest for them, even on behalf of an enemy. This is, of course, very controversial, just as it was when Jesus, in essence, stated it in the Sermon on the Mount. However, I'm convinced it is a deeply transforming principle of fundamental importance, which is universally recognized by the non-dogmatic branches of all the great world religions. It is held up in all of them as a behavior to aspire to. Indeed, this is the theme of one of Sir John Templeton's books called Agape Love, a tradition found in eight world religions. Furthermore, this is the only basis for true security. True security is based in transforming your enemies into friends. That can only in the end be achieved by the kind of sacrificial practices exemplified by Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Desmond Tutu. For this is the only way to touch the hardened heart. What seems rationally impossible can indeed become possible through the generosity and hope underlying and enabling kenosis and forgiveness. And this we experienced in South Africa. Nancy and I suggest this principle is deeply embedded in the universe, both in ethics and in other aspects of our lives, and will thus be discovered by deeply moral beings in the vicinity of Alpha Centauri or the Andromeda Galaxy, should they exist, just as it has been discovered by all the major religions here on Earth.